Hello everybody, thank you for joining us. My name is Dr Marcella Martin. I'm an IVF specialist at IVF Australia. I work out of the COGRA offices and the Miranda offices. And um, I'm honoured to sort of be doing a little talk with you guys today. I'm going to be talking about some of the conditions that affects your fertility. And there'll be a chance for you to ask me some questions. Um, you could even submit your questions live during this process or towards the uh, end of the program. And uh, any questions that I can't answer in a lot of time, I'd be happy to sort of um, get back to you at a later date. So tonight's topics, uh, we're going to list those. Tonight's topics are going to be um, the female reproductive system. We're going to discuss ovulation disorders as well touch upon polycystic ovarian syndrome, endometriosis and other conditions that may be slowing down your chances of conceiving within the time frame that you would like. And we'll briefly touch on some treatment options as well. So as mentioned, uh, to submit your questions, you could either use the Google handout and if you're joining us on Google handouts, you can use, um, you'll see a grid of squares on the top right hand hand side of the Hangout window. Click that and then click the Q&A button. This will open up questions and, um, and if you go down the right side, at the bottom there's a question window. Click Ask a new question, type your question and click Submit. If you're, you're, using, the, um, if you're using YouTube at the moment, you can submit your questions below the video in the comments section type your questions and click post. If we run out of time to answer your questions, as I mentioned, uh, free feel, to, uh, feel free to send them along anyway and we'll get back to you. So let's touch upon the reproductive system. So the diagram you have in your screen there shows you that the reproductive system really making babies starts in the brain. There are two sections in the brain, the hypothalamus and the pituitary, that are really important. And the job of these sections of the brain is to make some hormones that will help the ovaries cook an egg each month. If we look at um, the graph there, follicle stimulating hormone, which is uh, termed FSH, is the hormone that comes from the pituitary. It travels through your bloodstream to uh, tell your ovaries to allow one of the follicles, which is a fancy word for like saying the seed that you have in your ovary, to grow and mature into a nice ripe egg for that month. You release a little bit of that every single day during the course of your cycle and it builds up the amount of oestrogen you then have surrounding that um, egg that's maturing. The egg itself grows within a cyst. So it's normal to have a little cyst in your ovary and we need to see it get above about 17 millimetres at which point we know that we've got the possibility of a nice mature healthy egg in there. When you release your egg, the little cyst pops, the egg travels down the fallopian tube and you get a rise of another hormone called progestogen. Think of progestogen as that um, a button that controls the on and off button to tell you when to have and not to have a period. So all these things are intimately linked. Uh, with uh, the ovulation process, of course, it doesn't. Uh, the ovulation is important to make sure that egg is released, but it, the egg then needs to travel down some healthy fallopian tubes in order to become fertilised by sperm that's coming in the other direction. Once fertilisation has happened, the next process, important process is implantation. So those hormones that we looked at in the previous slides are also integral to making sure that you form a nice healthy lining inside the uterus. That way when the embryo travels into the uterus, it's got somewhere nice and soft to land, somewhere nice and soft to land has an ability to implant. So what are the things that affect female fertility? Well, these can be multiple. Of, of course, age can affect your chances of conceiving. We'll go into that a little bit more in a moment. If you're not getting your ability to ovulate um, properly, um, that can also affect your ability to get pregnant. If you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, that can interfere not only just with your ability to release and, 
and an egg appropriately, but also to set up the lining inside the uterus that needs to receive that embryo. With endometriosis, that's a condition that can disrupt the anatomy in the pelvis and cause damage to the fallopian tubes and the ovaries, therefore robbing you of the ability to um, produce healthy eggs and also that highway that's required between the ovary and the uterus for an embryo to form and travel down. The uterus itself may not be in a healthy condition. You might have benign five tumours called fibroids. There are other things that can lead to damage to the fallopian tube, and one of those is salpingitis when you have inflammation in the fallopian tubes. Another reason why you may not be able to fall pregnant is because there may be a chromosomal abnormality within individual eggs and sperm when they're coming together, and therefore it increases your chances of miscarriages and the chances of you not conceiving because there is a, a, a disease that your body is screening for. So let's look upon age. Age is an important factor in whether or not you have many eggs to um, sit through and try and hopefully try and achieve a pregnancy. Most women are quite surprised to find out that the, not, the time when they actually have the most amount of eggs is six months before they're actually born. By the time we're born, we're down to our last two million eggs. And then by the time we hit puberty, we're like down to our last 400,000 eggs. Unlike men who get to um, make a new quantity of sperm um, every three months, they have a nice fresh amount of sperm coming through. And uh, women, on the other hand, are, have a limited number of eggs. Each month, there's about 20 odd eggs that would like to that put their hands up and say, please pick me. And But only one of them gets a chance to receive all that FSH and estrogen attention and therefore mature into a nice ripe egg. If you, have a friend, if you know someone who's had twins that are non-identical, in such scenarios, they may have released two eggs. However, for most women, they release one egg and the rest just dissolve. They are lost over time. So ovulation disorders mean that there might be a disruption with your ability to produce a nice healthy egg. And we need to determine with which of these two hormones might be uh, involved or deficient in any shape or form. We talked about follicle stimulating hormone being the important message that lands on the ovary to tell the egg to mature. But we also have luteinizing hormone, which helps you release the egg and set up the house inside the uterus to achieve good um, implantation. So what's a normal menstrual cycle? Well, a normal menstrual cycle can vary from uh, 22 to 35 days. Well, not everybody has that perfect 28-day cycle. But when we have a very irregular periods that are only occurring every two to four months, or periods that hardly ever come at all, they may only come once or twice a year, we know that there is certainly a deficiency in some of the hormones we've discussed. With polycystic ovarian syndrome, there is also an issue of irregular periods. In addition, other symptoms that you might find are acne, obesity, excess facial body hair, and sometimes women have had an ultrasound that's been described as polycystic, meaning that they have lots of little cysts on their ovaries. Some women also have insulin resistance, which gets picked up as part of their workup. However, the symptoms for polycystic ovarian syndrome vary. There is a wide range of presentations. So you don't have to have all of these symptoms to be diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Polycystic ovarian syndrome we are increasingly recognising. And about one in five women may be diagnosed with PCOS. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is no longer a sentence to infertility. It is one of the, one of the options that we can um, help a lot with, ranging through lifestyle changes to um, improving your insulin resistance through medication 
and helping you ovulate either through tablets to injections and of course we've always got the backup plans of IVF processes so it doesn't always mean that that is what you're going to need though it's important for other health reasons to have your polycystic ovarian syndrome diagnosed properly and managed on a long-term basis Endometriosis is another condition that can affect your fertility. It affects about one in 10 women, and most commonly it presents as painful periods, at which point most women will at least seek some advice from their GP. It sometimes can also present with a little dark spotting that you see a few days before you get your proper menstrual period. And it can also project, present as pain during intercourse. The exact reason as to why endometriosis occurs is still a hotly debated question. However, what we're actually seeing is a little bit of the tissue that should be inside the uterus, the endometrium, we believe travels and implants itself into the pelvis. And that tissue becomes active uh, next cycle and responded to the hormones that are uh, affecting the inside of your uterus. So while you bleed from the inside of your uterus out through the vagina during your menstruation, you may also have some spotting and bleeding on the inside of your pelvis, which leads to the increased pain during your menses. We can treat endometriosis ultimately through laparoscopic surgery. But it doesn't always have to get to that point. It is very difficult to diagnose endometriosis on ultrasound unless it is severe enough to be causing a cyst on your ovary with endometriosis inside of it called an endometrioma. Other conditions that can affect your fertility include fibroids. So these are benign uh, lumps in the, in the muscle wall of the uterus and they're quite common, especially as we get older. They can either grow on the outside of the uterus, within the muscle or break through into, into the inner area of the cavity of the uterus. It's these latter ones that really can disrupt your fertility because we need that cavity to be um, clear of any fibroids. Otherwise, they can prevent the uh, embryo from implanting. Surgery is not always the correct answer for fibroids. Surgery comes at a cost to your uterus. So this needs to be discussed carefully with your gynecologist and fertility specialist. Tubal disease can result from endometriosis if it's been damaged. It can also result from inflammatory um, diseases and result in what we call salpingitis. Either of these conditions leads to scarring of the fallopian tubes, leads to them not being very functional in, being able, in, in terms of allowing the uh, egg and the sperm to meet and form an embryo and then allowing that embryo to progress into the uterus. A sperm and an egg individually are much smaller than an embryo. So when they do fertilise in the fallopian tube and because tubal disease is present, get trapped in the fallopian tube, the embryo then turns into an ectopic pregnancy. And of course, there's also chromosomal issues. Sometimes you may carry a small breakage in your chromosomes and your DNA that stops you from being able to form or makes it harder for you to form a healthy embryo and it may take longer to get pregnant. You may know of an inherited disease within your family that needs to be looked at and carefully consider whether we need to do some utilize some of our IVF techniques so that we can help eliminate this disease being passed on to your children. Chromosomal abnormalities don't just happen in the eggs, but they can also happen 
in the sperm as well. And that requires some advanced technology that we have available at IVF Australia to determine. So what are the treatment options? So most women by the time they come and see a fertility specialist have already investigated um, lifestyle changes and looked at their weight issues and, and embarked on a regular exercise program. We can also offer you some ovulation tracking advice as well in trying to help make sure that you have sexual intercourse at the right time, especially if your cycles aren't that perfect 28 day cycle, things can be a little bit tricky and it becomes stressful if you just keep doing it all on your own. Some of the uh, off the shelf tests and the chemists can also be very confusing for some people. So we do offer ovulation tracking services through IVF Australia. We may sometimes be able to help with um, you ovulating through medications such as tablets that commonly referred to as Clomid. And sometimes we use FSH injections in cells. Remembering back on that diagram that we initially discussed, where we know that that is the hormone that we sometimes have to um, supplement you with. And we're able to do that directly now. Sometimes there might be an issue with the sperm and the sperm may be a little bit might be good amounts of sperm, but they might be swimming so fast. And sometimes we can prepare the sperm in such a way that we improve its ability to do its job. And that's through artificial insemination. We also can utilise IVF and ICSI techniques for those who don't have many eggs or don't have much in the way of sperm. It doesn't mean that you can't have a baby. So the techniques that we can offer people really vary. And if you're feeling frustrated about not being able to get pregnant on your own, don't forget that one in six couples actually have trouble conceiving. It's not something that most people own up to. But it can be a source of tension. It can be a source of despair. It can be really upsetting when your friends get pregnant and you're not getting pregnant easily. We recognise all these difficulties. What I like to encourage women to think of is coming for a fertility checkup. Doesn't necessarily mean that there's a problem, but sometimes just slowly going through the check uh, list of things that we need to make sure are nice and healthy alleviates some of that stress. And hopefully along the way you fall pregnant on your own. Certainly if you haven't fallen pregnant within 12 months and you're under 35, you should be seeing a fertility specialist. If you're over 35 and things haven't happened smoothly over six months, I'd see one of us at that point. Because you've got to think about the fact that you might not just want one baby, you might need to plan ahead for baby number two as well. So a lot of people don't stop to take that into the equation, especially as they're getting a little bit older. So as I said, doing a fertility workup is not necessarily because you're going to have IVF, it's just making sure that you're fit and healthy. And we also take the opportunity to screen you for other things that you might need before you get pregnant, like getting your pap smears done, making sure your vaccines are up to date, etc. So just a reminder of how to ask your questions. And I think we've got some already. <laughs> So the first question is a great one. Um, it says, if you've been told you have polycystic ovaries on an ultrasound, does that mean you have PCOS? No, it does not. In order to be diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, you need to have two out of the following three criteria. One of them is an ultrasound picture that shows at some point that you've met the criteria for polycystic ovary. And there's a very definite definition for that that the sonographers have to meet. So it's important that the report gets checked out by your gynaecologist or IVF specialist, sorry, um, to make sure it does fit that right criteria. Because there's variation in, in the quality of the scans you get. The second category would be that you have um, very irregular cycles. And the third category would be that you either have biochemical or clinical evidence of too much testosterone. 
biochemical requires a test, it's often very hard to prove on a blood test that you have too much testosterone. Clinical though, think about your skin. You're getting increasing amounts of acne and are you getting thicker hair, especially in the chin line, nipple, abdominal region? These are questions that you need to ask. So it is not just based on an ultrasound. So thanks for that question. So the other question is, um, what uh, sexually transmitted diseases can affect your fertility? The most common one would be chlamydia. And chlamydia is a very common disease. And often women have been exposed to it without ever ha having any symptoms. So don't rely on your partner saying, I've never had an STD, or yourself say, thinking, I've never had any symptoms. It's often a good idea as part of your fertility workup that we check for chlamydia being the most common problem. There are other STDs that need to be spoken and discussed carefully before planning for a pregnancy. And one of these would be the herpes virus, but that doesn't necessarily affect your fertility. But it's good to have that discussion um, prior to falling pregnant with your GP or obstetrician. So thank you for that question. The next question is, um, for women who have endometriosis, uh, that the egg itself is encased with a toxin that stops sperm from penetrating the egg. Well, that's a question that we may be able to answer definitively in the future. There are certainly a lot of studies um, to look at whether or not there are some toxins being released by these little deposits of endometriosis in the pelvis. No one has yet isolated the particular uh, chemical that might be inhibiting um, pregnancy. We suspect something's out there, but it's not as easy to say that the egg itself is encapsulated in the toxin. Um, it's an area of research. So um, another question is, do we do follicle tracking? I've been told that a day 21 progesterone is, is important. Well, a day 21 progesterone shows that you've already ovulated in retrospect. So that's why we do that. So if we can see good evidence that your progesterone has risen, that means during the course of that month, you did ovulate doesn't tell you that you're ovulating on that day, it's far too late. It also tells us that you're making a good amount of progesterone, which is likely to allow you to um, form a good lining inside the uterus to hold on to a pregnancy. So that's, they're really good things if you have a nice progesterone rise. We do follicle tracking here at IVF Australia. And um, if you ring the 1800 number, I'm sure we can direct you to those services. Wonderful, I think that's all our questions for tonight. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, don't forget, happy to answer any more questions further down the track. I'm Marcella Martin, thanks for your time. <laughs>